Take a deep breath in. As you breathe in, breathe in a resourceful feeling of calm and relaxation. And as you exhale, just allow your eyelids to close. And as they close, notice. You can focus more on the sound of my voice. When you breathe in, breathe in deeper. And when you exhale, exhale for longer. Giving you a sense of every inward breath. Or breathing in relaxation and a feeling of resourcefulness. Scan your body for any clues of tension or stress. And as you exhale, feel that stress, that tension dissipating, melting away. Feel it leave your body in that outward breath so that with every breath you're becoming deeper and deeper relaxed. The slower you breathe, the deeper you breathe, the more you feel you're going to a place, a place where change becomes natural, effortless. You couldn't keep things exactly as they are if your life depended on it. Change is inevitable, natural. So if change is happening anyway, doesn't it make sense to change those things that increase the quality of your life and make changes that reduce any of those things that could impact the things you value the most? So as you breathe in and breathe out, start to audit, appreciate, evaluate those things you value the most. Some of those things you don't realize how valuable they are until you start to lose them. We never value our health until we get sick. We don't truly value a friendship or a relationship until there's a risk of losing it. I want you to get a sense of all those things that you truly appreciate and value in your life. Some of it might be things you've never even thought about. For people that exist in the world with only one lung. And you don't give too much time to value those two lungs that you have. people that exist on the planet with diseases that impact internal organs. So as you breathe in and breathe out, notice the feeling of gratitude for those things you value the most. But also value your ability to make choices. You could choose to do things. Choose to do things that make you feel good. And give you more of those things that you value. Or you could choose to do things. That make you feel good in the moment. But that it could jeopardize those things you value. I want you to use the power of your imagination to imagine an impressive, ornate spiral staircase. Imagine yourself at the top, and maybe it's made of iron and metal, or wood, or marble, or something else. And as you look down, you can almost see what looks to be the beginning of a spiral. As 
as I count downwards from 10 to 1, you will imagine walking down the spiral staircase. All the way deep down. 10, taking your first steps. And with each step down the staircase, feel yourself becoming deeper and more relaxed. 9. Noticing that relaxation in different parts of your body. Releasing tension around your forehead, your jaw. That's it. 8. More steps down the staircase. Releasing any tension in your neck and your shoulders. Continuing to go deep, deep down. That's it. 7. Arms feeling limp, loose and heavy. 6. As you breathe in. Notice everything connected with breath. Relaxes your nostrils, windpipe, chest, lungs, diaphragm. Feel a wave of relaxation. The deeper you breathe, the deeper relaxed you can become. And then six other internal organs also release tension, stomach, heart. All of it leading deep down into your gut. That's it, and then five, and then four, just feeling this wonderful feeling of lightness. Arms feeling limp, loose, and heavy, but also feeling a lightness in your head, in your neck, and your shoulders. And now focus on your legs, continuing to walk down this staircase. That's it. Deep, deep down, three legs getting limp, loose, and heavy. To the extent that your legs feel like they're not even working anymore, you're just floating down the remaining part of the staircase. And it's only when you get to the bottom, two and then one. Feel your feet on the ground at the base of that spiral staircase. Looking up to see how far you've come deep, deep down. And imagine walking forwards in a small corridor leading to a door. The door leads to a room. And in the room there will be a couch. And now standing in front of the door as I count down from five to one, you will open the door, walk through the door. Find the couch, the sofa, and just feel yourself relaxing in that comfortable sofa. Five, putting your hand on the handle. Four, turning the handle. Three, opening the door. Two, walking through the door. And one, closing the door behind you. Finding that sofa. And I want you to imagine in front of the sofa is a large screen. And it becomes clear this screen is some form of user interface for you to create a game the coding of this game is just your imagination. You set an intention, an idea, and the game becomes a creation. And I want you to use the power of your imagination to imagine staring into the screen, where you start thinking of a game that facilitates change. There's certain rules. The game has to be fun to play. The game has to be winnable. And the game has to lead to profound positive changes. And I want you to think of one area of your life. Maybe a relationship with a substance or something else. Perhaps you could imagine But if you make the whole game the absence of doing one thing, it's like playing a game by not playing. So instead, I want you to imagine how you make the game winnable by filling the void of time with something that would perhaps do a similar thing but without any negative side effects. If a substance temporarily boosted a feeling of connection with yourself, you could imagine something that would help with this game 
is to do something else that increases this feeling of connection with yourself. Perhaps to make the game more winnable, you would choose to do this new thing at the same time you used to do the old thing. Creating a location based zero sum game. The pattern interrupt is that you're in a different location. You can't do the same thing because you're in a different place. But what if in this different place you're doing something else that also makes you feel good? And maybe you can decide on a scoring system for this game. Could be points, tokens, something else. And I wonder what this game should reward most. Maybe it could be progress incremental improvements. I want you to think about how the difficulty level starts off super easy. Just making a decision wins the first level. Just going and being in a place that's different wins the second level. But it gets more difficult, but only in proportion to your ability to still do whatever that new thing is. I want you to get a sense that there are strategies to win this game. And one of the strategies to make the things that improve your life These are things that you feel good while you're doing them, but also feel good when you think back at what you've already done. Because if something feels good in the moment, but you get a sense of pride or a feeling of gratitude when you think back to that thing, maybe you could call this winning in life. And so much of what you value most. There were moments of decisions. But you still feel good now. Even when you think back to that previous decision. And yet there are other things. We can call these the traps in the game. Things that look like. The exact thing that you would want. Until you realize it's a trap, a trick. And these are the things that feel good in the moment, but lead to undesirable consequences or feelings of regret, shame, or guilt later. To win this game, the trick is to learn quickly. What are the things that feel good in the moment and feel good later? And what are the tricks and traps that feel good in the moment but then have a consequence later? If in doubt, zoom out. Because some of these, the consequences are decades later. I want you to think about certain things you're proud of in your life that when you did them it felt good and you know it's also going to feel good and keep giving years into the future but maybe you can imagine a time in your childhood eating sugary sweets it felt good in the moment Perhaps years later you realized that it was eroding your teeth. You just didn't know then when the consequences would come. 
to allow your unconscious mind to figure out that this game is giving you things that feel good in the moment, that continue to give in the future rather than take away. Imagine perhaps seeing yourself playing this game in a third person perspective in this one area of your life. How do you do less of the thing before and more of this new thing? What does level one success look like? Level two, level three. But the most insidious of all the tricks in this game we can call the sirens. The sirens are not police sirens or alarms. They're sirens like the Greek myths. There is something about the sirens that makes it feel tantalizing, compelling, desirable, but it can lead to the ultimate demise of those that fall under the spell of the siren. There are tactics, of course. In Greek myths, sailors would put wax in their ears so they couldn't hear the sirens. Out of sight could very well be out of mind. If the stimulus isn't there to draw you in, you can't be under the spell of the siren. The sailors could have taken a different route, nowhere near to the sirens. They couldn't hear them because they were so far away. They couldn't be drawn in towards the rocks. the lead hero in the story was able to hear the siren song but still not do anything about it because he was tied to the mast of the ship and maybe there are ways of taking these principles for those alluring tantalizing Things that feel that they can bring about a different version of you. The sailors under the spell of the Greek myths. Lured in by the siren song. Were not themselves. But it didn't matter. Once the song had taken hold... They were lured in until the ships crashed into the rocks and the sirens feasted on their flesh. And I wonder what are the sirens in your life or this game? But what if, rather than being close to the rocks and the sirens... You were just in a completely different location. How can the song hit your ears? If you're so far away, you couldn't hear it anyway. I want you to get a sense that this is a game you're always playing, even if you don't realize you're playing. And maybe the score system isn't numbers in the corner of a screen. Maybe it's your health, your happiness, your self-esteem, your confidence. What if the way this game is scored is different? In which case you'll know if you're doing better at playing this game. Because your health improves. Your confidence improves sense of purpose, energy, vitality, 
all improve. I want you to get a sense then. You are the player and the coder. You play the game and make the game. Giving you a unique advantage compared to all of those other people that are playing the game and have no idea they're even playing. I want you to unlock all of your resources in every game you've ever played or understood to give you a sense that you know what to do to make this game winnable. So winnable that the idea of playing an early version of the game is just boring and no longer interesting for you. There was a time, perhaps when you were three, four years old, riding a cycle with stabilizers. But you don't need the stabilizers anymore. You adjusted your skill set to a higher level of difficulty and didn't go back to playing a less interesting version of the game. And if your unconscious mind is willing to now level up, to breeze through these early levels, to feel good about the progress, to notice the scoring system in your own life based on how you feel, the quality of your life, the quality of your health, to the extent that these old games you used to play feel immature and boring. Let me know by nodding your head. The game is winnable. You know how to play it. And once you've defeated whatever it is that is impeding your progress the idea of going backwards just seems like a waste of time I want you to get a sense that whatever changes you make in yourself could give inspiration insight to ideas, principles, or changes that could help thousands more people. That whatever path you're on could be beneficial to other people on a similar path. And then you leave the room having a sense that this game feels winnable. There are strategies, approaches, ways of thinking about your life now that seem like it's never been so easy to win this game. So you walk down the corridor and see a spiral staircase, this time climbing upwards. As I count from 1 to 10, you will imagine rapidly climbing up the spiral staircase, finding yourself in the present moment, in the here and now, taking all of these insights and changes with you. Take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your nose. Just wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, ready to climb up that spiral staircase into the present moment. Starting to count. One, two, three, waking up. Four, five, six, more alert. Seven, eight, open your eyes, open your eyes. Nine, ten, wide awake, wide awake, wide awake. 